what? We're live. Hey, guess what? It's just the Scott Kid. We're at Palestay Sheila Reno. It's a Saturday afternoon special matinee event with the Royal Blue from Appleton, Wisconsin. Thanks, guys, for coming on. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yep, you do have to answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, smiles can't be heard, just seen. So we'll start with introductions, name, and what it is you do in the band. Jason Nelson, drummer. Jeff Togner, bass. Carl Crowell, guitar and vocals. And how long has the Royal Blue been in existence? Well, 2014. Yeah, 2014. Is this the original lineup? This is who the Royal Blue has always been? No, we had another guitar player and he dropped out. Okay. So. And then you got Carmen? No. <laughs> no, well, we started, we started as a four piece. Okay. We started, in, we started in, uh, in Jeff's basement. Jeff and I started. Uh, that, that's another story that goes way back. But, yes. But we, Herb and I started um, playing some songs together, and then thought, eh, let's let's see if we want to make a band, and then we put some ad on Craigslist, which I think Sketchballs did too. They did. Yeah, I know the story. <laughs> uh, and uh, then uh, Jason joined the band, and another fellow, uh, Jason Olson. Um, so we were four piece for a while. We were just kind of experimenting. Do we want to be a band? And, and we. We're doing like coffee houses and open mics, kind of acoustic, and it just kind of got grew and grew. And, yeah. What made you, Jason, want to join these guys? I think I just wanted to jam. I'd been out of the music for a while, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, I don't know. They had a cool practice space at Jeff's office there, and uh, it just seemed it seemed pretty uh, relaxed, and that, that's kind of what I was looking for, just to jam, just to have fun. Let's talk about how you got back into playing music because we're super geeked that you're here because we're nerds and we do our history and we know that you folks were the mess from the 80s which was you know kind of a revolutionary punk band when you talk about music who mixed, mastered and produced you guys and then you know quite a long hiatus and now back again doing this how did you get back into doing music what made you want to do this again this basically goes to the documentary that's being made about the Green Bay Park scene. Yay! I was up there being interviewed for the mess, and I didn't know Carm was around in the area. We thought he was MIA. We haven't heard from him in years. But one of the guys up there, Corey, <laughs> told me that Carm was in the area. So I looked him up and got in touch with him. And he made me come over to play guitar with us. He made you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. No, we, yeah, we hooked up together and we just thought, let's uh, do it again. Let's just play some songs together. We're just, yeah. What's the difference now from when you first played music to what you're doing now? 35 years? <laughs> I mean, yeah, 35 years. I mean, I, neither one of us has been doing a thing. Nothing. Zero. Really since the mid-80s. I mean, uh, neither one of us musically at all. The band is different. I mean, in the mess, I was just a lead vocalist. We had a, you know, we had a guitar player and a mm -hmm. different drummer, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the drummer was a little older than me. Yeah. <laughs> just a little younger. <laughs> but what is the scene like as far as difference from the 80s compared to now? Was music more received then than it is now? What are the differences with that? I would have to say. You're nodding your head yes, but I'm going to say no. That it's not different? No, that it wasn't very well received back then. Yeah. Oh, well. You, speak go to ahead. That. No, no, speak your mind. <laughs> no, no, I was going to have you speak your mind. But I, I just remember back then, it, it depends what side you're looking at it. I mean, as far as in Appleton, I mean, I think we were the first punk rock band in Appleton. I don't know that. But it was, I mean, when we, we played a gig in Mina, you know, we were just 17, 18 year old kids at a bar. The drinking age was different back then. Mm -hmm. But there was a, a, a massive fight there between the bikers and the punk rockers because people we were punk street. rock. I mean, the police came and shut the. I mean, it was it was it was pretty crazy. And I don't I don't think you see that today. So we were looked upon as being oddballs, the ones out and, pe and people who did dress weird back then. And you had spiked hair or dyed hair. You, you could get beat up, and people did get beat up. But you, you wouldn't have that today. I mean, I don't think. I, you know, we didn't have that much problem in Appleton. But no. in Green Bay, in Green Bay and Oshkosh, tougher, tougher for those, those guys. guys had a hard time. But in Appleton, yeah. no one messed with us. We yeah. just we're, maybe we were so weird. Well, we weren't that weird. <laughs> maybe they were afraid of us. Or, like, we just better leave him alone because he's on meds or something. 
<laughs> so, so why, A, did you start a band that was punk rock, and now, why this, it, it is different, you're, I, I wouldn't, yeah. you know, you're not, you're not punk! No, I don't know, you're, we're genre fluid. Right. Thanks, Sketchballs. <laughs> <laughs> genre fluid, yes! Yeah, that's a new term. <laughs> I like that, that term. term. So, so why punk and now this? Well, the mess started, it's, again, it was a, kind of a jam thing in, in the basement of Pete Wright's house. And we, I, I believe we were just trying to do the town show at the high school. It was just a high school town show, and we decided, let's do some Sex Pistols tunes mm. for the town show. So we learned some Sex Pistols tunes, and we did the town show. And then we thought, well, let's, let's keep the band together. And then we found out there was a punk scene. Mm. And we were trying to, we didn't know anything about, this is before the internet, right? So it's, we didn't know anything about maximum rock and roll, about hardcore, I mean, we were just getting introduced into it, so then we were put into our first hardcore show or whatever, it was, like some it bowling great. alley or something, I don't know. Kutska is for Nashkosh or? It's a uh, union upstairs maybe, place. Maybe, I don't know. Wait, what's Kutska's? I don't know. Anyway. Did you say you played with this for you? Mm -hmm. We did play with this for you, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That was fun. And Soul Asylum, which was Loud Fast Rules at the time. Yeah. That's awesome, too. And I think at least for me, getting to know that web and know that there are people who started music that, you know, I I was little, I listened to stuff as a teenager, it's like, this is fucking really good shit. You know, do these people still exist? And then to have them come sit in my basement and go, oh, we know all these people, <laughs> is like amazing to me that that continues. Um, and because there wasn't internet, how did you get your name out there as opposed to now? Maximum rock and roll. Yeah, sick uh, team. Sick Team, Norbrook, for Net Max and Rock and Roll Hands, you had the Sick Team fanzine. Mm -hmm. um, got, uh, yeah, there was some fanzines going on. A friend of mine, Brandon, had a fanzine. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, and it was word of mouth. Word of mouth, but a total show, DIY. A show back then, too, was a big, I think a, it was a bigger event than like playing a show now, because when you were 18 or 20 or whatever, and there was a show that everyone was talking about, it was a big event. And, I don't know, it's a bigger deal, so, so picking up the phone and the flyers and, yeah. Do you think that zines should come back as a medium to utilize so that people can continue to have little blog spots written about them, music reviews, and have that kind of DIY as a traditional form come back for promotion? Well, they are more or less. You know, people writing stuff on like what you're doing. That's basically an online. I, I would say that. Uh, <laughs> maximum, <laughs> maximum rock and roll is still around. Yeah. Uh, I would say what you're doing is that. Yeah, I think that the media not in paper changed. form. Right. But I know that there are lots of people who like paper form right. because it's e I don't know. I think it's easier. You know how to pick something up and read it as opposed to how the fuck do I work an algorithm of your stuff and drop things into things? Wait. What did you say? Uh, you said about reading things unless you're a drummer. Unless you're, oh, 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 we were oh. making fun of him earlier. Today. He's a drummer. Yeah. So started the trip off with yeah, these jokes. This whole you could have put a guitar player, bass player in it. Yeah. any of those. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so fast forward now. But, to oh, sorry. I would just no, go no, ahead. It doesn't matter. No, go ahead. Well, it's just about the music because uh, you know what we're doing. A Punk now. I mean, I don't know. We're not punk. Not punk no. well, you know what? We, we write music. I mean, when him and I started, it was acoustic, and I was just had acoustic songs. So some of those songs became electric. Mm. But I mean, now when we're writing songs, they're just whatever we're working on, and we're working on. So it's sort of like if it's, it's this or it's that, but uh, we're not. How we're would not you characterize yourself? Just like you said, what's that word? Genre fluid. Yeah, genre, genre fluid. fluid. I mean, when you post your music online, what tags do you utilize? Because I think when you first well, sent us music, it was Garage Rock yeah. Surf. Gr no, not Surf. I like Surf, but I don't know why I don't. But anyway, we're good. Revali is kind of Surf, yeah. man. Yeah. Shed Rock. <laughs> yeah, Did uh, I say it wrong? Yeah, it's okay. How do uh, you say it? Revali. 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 Yeah. It's French. It's French. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we wrote it in French. Yeah? <laughs> I know it's French because I had to look up how to pronounce yeah, it like before the, we played it on the show. Yeah, yeah. military reveille. Yeah, got you. Yeah. All right. See, it helps. Watch. I'm okay with being corrected. I want yeah. to be if I'm yeah. saying something wrong. It's okay. <laughs> if you watch The Office, yes, right at the end, 
says Ravelry, and there's a little Ah, oh, gotcha. That's, I, yeah. And I thought, what a, a great name for a song that says, means to get up. Get up. Yes. Get up. Yeah. Start moving. Get up. Oh, get on up. No? Nope. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, with having now come back in 2014 to present, um, has it been easy to grow attention to what it is that you're doing? Is there a scene still in the area that you currently are located in? We just do what we we play what we want, you know, like, we're really not part of any scene, are we? I don't think we are. I mean, no, we make friends <laughs> with, no, other, no. with other groups and, yeah. you know, and we try to network as, as groups, as original bands. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to play all night long. We don't, I don't want to play a four hour show. I just don't want to. I want to play 35, 45 minute set and get out. I mean, and that's, that's how we're designed, and we want to play early. We want to play at nine o'clock and be done by ten. You know, not <laughs> two in the morning. And it's not. It's not because. Well, I mean, we are a little bit older, but it's more or less like to appreciate how the the people are. Because I'm a I'm a viewer of music too, and I do not want to wait until one in the morning to see a headlining act. You know, I, I just know don't. I'm getting old too. I'm like. I want to sit here and fall asleep. <laughs> I don't I can't know drink why. anymore. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so that being said, how often are you guys out and about checking out other bands and going to other shows? I'm kind of a recluse. Okay. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I am, you yeah. came here. I yeah. We we get all we get them all when we play, but That's I think fun. we're all pretty it, it, yeah. Were you a recluse back when you started the mess? I don't know. I don't. I don't remember that. I don't. That's yeah, that's I don't remember. That's so long ago. But but I mean we we <laughs> we you know we watch other bands that we play with. But I'm not a typical go out and watch bands on my own. I just I just you know I follow on Facebook when I can. I listen to music online when mm -hmm. I can. You know, but you know. What are your main influences for this group? Musically, you mean? Mm -hmm. What compels you to do this? <laughs> wow! <laughs> holy shit! <laughs> There's just so many. Things. There's just so many things. I don't even know how to answer that. I mean, are you asking like your favorite rock band, or what makes you? Uh, okay, for me, it's just I. I don't know actually. I just you know, it's like working on music is just like practicing guitar. It's the same thing that compels me to practice guitar. I can't tell you what it is. I just go downstairs and practice guitar. Or I, I, for whatever reason, the three of us are working yeah. together, drawn to each other. This is what we're doing right now. This is what this is what we're supposed to be doing. I, I can't say trying to reach a goal because I don't really. Have yeah, that sounds kind of weird being in a band. I know that, but like not having a goal. Like, oh, we're trying to make That's this. That's okay. Realistic, <laughs> but, we're realistic. But realistic being it. realistic. I mean, it, we, this is just what we're doing, and it just seems right. We enjoy. I think we enjoy being writing music together. I mean, that's. That's probably my passion is to write, and I know with these guys too, we love to record. Mm -hmm. I mean, we love to be in the studio. Uh, we love writing music, and you know, it's it's really starting to become uh, pretty smooth our, our chemistry as far mm -hmm. as writing goes, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's fun, you know. Basically, yeah. I enjoy look. I look forward to practice. You know. How often do you folks practice? Pretty much once a week. Sometimes twice a week if we got something big coming up. Yeah. And how does the music form? Is there one main person in this group that says, oh, we're going to do this, and the rest of them are like, yeah, okay, that sounds good, I can do this. Or do you all collaboratively go, hey, I've got this really cool thing I want you to do, can you do this? Oh, here, now we create lyrics to this riff that I wrote. Or how does Depends. your music process go? We have two different ways, basically. Either Karn comes in with some lyrics and some ideas of, lay out a chord and or we start fresh from nothing scratch mm -hmm. with, from a riff mm -hmm. those are basically the two different ways are you but the main songwriter then like lyrically lyrically so, I, I will, yeah not all of them most of them okay so what from what you played today did you write all of those lyrically mm. did anybody else contribute lyrically to anything that was played today <laughs> come on down is all of us uh, take your face away is all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And I think lyrically, Carm puts all the lyrics together. I mean, I do I do some backups, and of course, those are not a lot of times are they even words. But um, <laughs> it works. I, uh, it works, Shane. I I, I, I uh, write There's my splinters. little parts. Yeah. There's, <laughs> but but yeah, for the most part, and you know, just I was thinking about this on the way down, is I don't really pay attention too much to the lyrics. <laughs> Sorry, Carm, but uh, when I do, I really am, I'm like. A little bit blown away because they, the lyrics are are pretty damn good. I, I figure I gave you that compliment. You gave me ten bucks before, so yeah, quality lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> that makes up for the slap him. Yeah. <laughs> so, where does your lyrical content come from? What? I don't know. I don't know. I've never had trouble writing lyrics. Okay. They seem to just come to me. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that maybe sounds weird, but you know, we start a, a groove, and I'll sometimes record if we're working on something and whatever I spit out of my mouth I might go back home and listen to it and grab snippets of it mm -hmm. but I, I, I've i been uh, able to just kind of write lyrics I, I, and it was even back with the mess too it was kind of the same thing I just could come up with lyrics and didn't really even think about them I ba basically I write and write and write and write without trying to censor myself mm -hmm. you know flow of just write 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 or type now stream now of it, consciousness you know, stream of consciousness now it's type 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 like this don't like this like this don't. And, and so sometimes I came to yeah, that's, and that's how it happens. Are you driven to convey a specific message, or are they just things that come off the top of there, your head? There are more things that come off the top of my head, more life experiences, because I don't have a message for anybody. Why? Food. Yeah, people have their own message. I mean, they, that's their own. I mean, I don't want to interfere with, yeah, food. Okay, food's an exception. Like, <laughs> like, I was going to say, there's, there's, there's a message there's own, there. There's own war with food. <laughs> Big bad cake and power are both. And my attacks food. on my attacks on the food industry and pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they're so, evil. Okay, so there you go. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a few examples. We can all agree on that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, so then why why those two songs with that message? Like, what do you want people to know about them? Because you, I'm going well, to say an antithesis to yours. I don't know. That well, I'm, you do want someone to know something, which is why you wrote them. True. Okay, so um, the food industry. Uh, I'm, I'm a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I'm a part-time vegan. Part-time vegan because I'm a vegan at home, but when I go out, it's difficult okay. to be a vegan. So I'm not, I don't call myself a vegan, really, but I believe in the principles of being a vegan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, there's health reasons and there's moral reasons, but the, the health reasons is because our food is poison. Mm -hmm. There's so much poison and chemical in our food, in our water, uh, water, I don't know what you can do much about. You can filter it, but there's there's so much. And, With more chemicals. And, and what they what they're doing to, I mean, whether it's vegetables or it's meat or whatever it is, there's it's it's crazy, and it's and it's hidden. Mm -hmm. So if you if you start to look at things like cancer studies in the East, uh, you know, low cancer rates in the East and low MS in the East compared to the West. Yes. Why? Because we're harming people for a specific reason, which then ties into your pharmaceutical thing. Well, I'm on the same. Sort of I mean, that's a whole other issue. Is there a cure? Is there a cure for cancer? There's, they just won't. They just won't. There's do cures, it. I think, for everything, right, and we won't then, give people oh, that because there's no money in it. Right. If we make people well, then we feel that we've done a disservice, which is fucking completely wrong, in my opinion. I will stand on multiple soapboxes because that's what <laughs> I, I kind of believe in. I I want us to evolve it as a species to a higher level, and I don't think we're doing that. And I think that does tie into your food and pharmaceutical thing. It's almost directly mm -hmm. tied together. If we make them dumb and we make them have problems, then we can control them. Mm -hmm. And that is nothing that I like or support ever. I don't want to control anybody. We're all free thinking. That goes completely into, you know, arguments of free will versus, you know, control and all, all sorts of other things. I'll calm down now. <laughs> but I could go on and on. We have a milk crate right here. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to stand on any... That's not a soap box, though. We've done away with those. Just sprinkle my drift into things. No. Is it difficult to find food you can eat? Or do you grow your own? I No, I can find food. Okay. Yeah. Fr well, Frank's... <laughs> Restaurant. Well, I had some pancakes. So was I a vegan yeah. at Frank's? No, but I'm, but, you know. Whatever. I must say, it's a great, great place. I love it. Yeah, Frank's is great. Good. Yeah. yeah. 
hard. Uh, no, it's not hard to find. It's it's harder. I mean, I used to live in, in uh, my poems are itchy. What does that mean? Am I going to get money? That's what it's <laughs> supposed to be. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, it, it depends. I mean, I, I, I'm fine. I mean, I, yeah. You can you you just have to you have to prep more. I mean, I spend more time prepping on the weekends. I have to cook, prep vegetables and rice and legumes and all that. I prep stuff for the weekend so I can do my. You know, stuff. I think you're more aware of also probably what you're putting into yourself because you have to make sure that you still maintain a certain like mineral vitamin balance and protein so that you're not like I'm dying because I only had oh, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. We have a bunch of friends who are vegan, and yeah. so our home is an inclusive space so that when we have potlucks and stuff, we have quite a wide variety of food yeah. for people to eat. So we understand and we appreciate that. We are a vegan friendly band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So then, <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like, all meat eggs. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, anybody else play in anything else, or is this the main thing that you three do? Unless they're hiding out on you. I'm not going to say No, I'm <laughs> This is it. We're, uh, we're fading. Yeah, yes. You know. Do you find that it would be difficult to be in other projects? Or is that just something you're not seeking out because this works so well? Never yeah, thought of that. Ever, yeah. This is as busy as I'd want to be with music. You know, I, am, I, I got a family too, and I, I like having the music, um, but... You know, and we talked about this too, is, you know, we want to do it in a, how we want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to do it more than we want to, and we don't want to do it less than we want to. And so we always are kind of working that out between each other. And uh, I think last year we played 23 shows. 23 sh shows. It was like two shows a month, which that's kind of the way we set it up. And sometimes, you know, we might play four shows or five shows in a month and then no shows for a couple of months. But, um, you know, we could be busier, but I think we're getting a little more pickier with where we're playing. Mm -hmm. And I like that because, um, you know, I don't know. I think the venue is, is important. Yeah, speak on that. Where's been the best place to play? Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. Because you are so friendly all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Even though I yell at people and knife hands people about certain things. Your um, soapboxes are friendly. <laughs> they're well received. That's good. Uh, but like, how busy are you? Like you said, you, you've been playing out. You played, you know, 20 plus shows last year. Is there, a, like, where around the area are you playing? Are you predominantly staying in the Fox Valley? Or... We play very little in Appleton, actually. Yeah? Most of the time yeah. it's up in Green Bay or Oshkosh or Milwaukee or Minneapolis, Minneapolis or Madison, you know. Yeah. Very little in Appleton for some reason. Hmm. No idea. That's interesting. Appleton used to have a giant ska fest. Do you know about that? Yeah, let's do it, yeah. I don't know, do you? Yeah. It used to be held at Lawrence University. Oh. Um, and it was massive, and then it, you know, fell apart probably. When was this? From the probably mid, I want to say nine. I wasn't there. One to 2000 and probably eight. I was under wrong now. Sorry. No excuse. <laughs> that works. I mean, you know, that's. When we talk about music scenes, I would say that, you know, there's been pop-ups and it gets really strong mm -hmm. and then it dies away for some reason, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, why, you know, what's the difference between yeah. the 80s to now? Is that something that just constantly occurs or is that something that can be worked on and fixed? Why does music die? Internet? <laughs> Well, that's, that's good. These, are these tough questions? We're, 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 we're kind of talking about that. Yeah, the with the, the whole here. punk scene. Yeah. and uh, yeah. Back in the 80s, we were kind of in the, in the, in the <laughs> second wave of punk, mm -hmm. a bit more in the hardcore area. Mm -hmm. And we really weren't a hardcore band. We were more of a Okay. More of a punk band than a hardcore band. Traditional punk. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. 70s punk. Kind of. yeah. That's what you sound yeah. like to me. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Then that whole scene kind of fizzled out, mm -hmm. and everyone went away to college. And 
think yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, once I, I mean, I left. I don't know what happened after that. For me, I can't really relate too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, yeah. When did you come back here? I moved back to Appleton in 2006, uh, and that's when I thought I gotta do something. So I started playing guitar then, mm -hmm. and then doing my just at home playing guitar, and then you, you know, like Jeff was saying, do that that green the green blob that punk rock documentary. Mm -hmm. That's how him and I got hooked up again. Awesome. And where can people find that documentary? Is it done or is it's it? Come on, guys, let's get it taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> Do I need to write a letter? Yeah, at least you might need to write a letter. They're, they're still working on it. Okay. Yeah. How long ago did they begin? Where are we at in the least process? Four, maybe, well, two, three years. My maybe? interview was in 2014, I think. So it's been a while. That I don't know if it's a financial thing or they're just backlogged with with work they need to do. I don't know. Hmm. You know, follow-up questions are, I think, acceptable to ask at this point, right? Because, uh, are you familiar with the documentary You Weren't There? No. That, that showcases the Chicago punk scene from the 70s? Yeah. So that one um, was something that we heard about and how we come to be friends with Tutu and the Pirates, who in that documentary are credited as bringing punk to Chicago. Um, but this kind of sounds like a similar documentary and I know that it was like one film student who's kind of doing this as a homage, let's get people to know about why we have music currently in our city. And so, I don't know, send some follow-up questions. Put me on them, I'll ask questions. I'm not scared. <laughs> <laughs> Is a tour anything that you would be interested in doing? Like, I know that you said you don't have goals, per se, but... It's not, <laughs> it's not so bad. We don't have any goals. But we do, I mean, we're working on new material. Okay. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of the thing we're at right now. I mean, and, and we know we're going to record again. Mm -hmm. that's, that's our goal. I mean, I mean, for me personally, that's my... I like doing that. I'd rather be a studio band. I mean, I'd be totally happy being... Uh, just being... A, writing and doing stuff in the studio. I don't like you people. I don't want to go out and see you people. I want <laughs> no, to sit no. and play guitar and no, sing. No, that's not. I mean, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> no, just, you know. That's all right. You can say that. Yeah. That's fine. We've had lots it's not, of people. It's not about not liking yeah. people. It's just, I, that's what I like. I like the creative part of it. And, and you were saying, too, about other projects. And I think, you know, with the three of us the way we're working now, if one of us came came in with us an idea that was different than anything we did, something mm -hmm. off the wall, different area, I know that we'd all be open to it when we do it. We need, let's go get a violin player, and we'll have a violin player come, I got this idea, and it's going to be different, it's not our normal thing, but I know we'd all work on it together. That's you know, which is cool, we're not like pigeonholed into this, whatever that, or... So you said you're working on new music. Mm -hmm. So where are we in the process of that? When can We're people anticipate this stuff? We're hoping to go back in the studio around mm -hmm. November. Mm -hmm. We've got about six or seven songs so far. Hoping to do ten at least. I think Green Green Tea Lightning is one of one of those. That'll yeah, probably be recorded. Well, yeah. Recorded electrical, electrical, with electricity. Okay. <laughs> you know, electric guitar. Plugged right? in, Brad. Plugged in. <laughs> Who does your recording? Where? Talk about that process because you do have things up right now. So, lots of things up because mm -hmm. we've kind of gone through your whole discography online. There's not been anything that we haven't played that we didn't like. Um, That's good. Yeah, it, it, you guys are really good. Like. We That's very good. much enjoy your music. Thank you. Um, our kids like your music. so <laughs> That's more important. Yeah. Right? The, the next generation. Like, that is that mm. a goal to reach them? But talk about recording. Who records you? Who mix masters? And how do you get your stuff out? So far, we've recorded at two different studios. <clears throat> We're looking at a, for the new album, at a, another you studio. Need more of that? Hmm? You need more of that. That's right. I'm good. Okay. You're looking so, at a third studio? At a different studio. We're really not sure yet. We recorded at Secondhand Studio in Appleton, our first album, and our EP, the My Woman on the Train. Big Bad Kate came out of Ice Cream Parlor in Green Bay. Uh, mm -hmm. And we did re uh, record at Green Tea at NWTC. Yep, the single we did with, at Northwestern Technical College. Mm -hmm. So the students have Northeast audio, Wisconsin. audio engineer. Oh, what is it? What is it? Northeast. What did Wisconsin. I say, Northwestern? Yeah. Well, it's NW. Yeah. You guys need a new 
Northeast okay. is one word. <laughs> Northeast is two words. Geography! <laughs> well, I always was confused by NWTC. Yeah, we don't live that. in Seattle. Why is it called N -North NW, like Northwest? Yeah. You know, but it's Northeastern Wisconsin Technical College. The students, have an, the students have an audio engineering class or program. program yeah. And so we got to record for free. Cool. So we brought in acoustic guitar, Cajon, and Jeff on bass, and then we recorded it, you know, for free, and then we got a, a release. And, and we're going back to do it again. We're going to do it again. Electric this another, time. Another song, this time electric, different song. Very cool. So yeah. send them this video and have those texts, pull it so you have a live. Yeah. That would be cool. Right? And it's kind of neat because yeah. we got, uh, so we recorded that one song and we got nine version or nine. One from each of the students. Nine, nine versions of it. And then we picked, you know, of course. <laughs> The one we wanted. And, Very cool. And it was really good for the students. You know, they, they really enjoyed it. And, you know, of course, you've got to be How did you end up having that opportunity? Did you seek them out or did they seek you out? I work I work at the college myself, so I, I found out through our internet there, and I know the engineer and the program instructor. So, uh, you know, it's something that we do. I think it's good for the students, it's good for us too. And I kind of give back to the students in a way, and, and we get something out of it, which is great. That's really great. Does that school have a radio station? Yes, they do. Cool. So do they play you? No. I, it's, I, <laughs> what? Jason. They, they won't. No, I'm, uh, I think it's more of a talk radio. I, guess. I feel kind of bad because I don't know much about it, but um, yeah, I'm going to learn more next week. I know that the UW system itself has several radio stations. I think Stout has one, Eau Claire has one. Point. Um, I know Parkside has one because that's where I was, I started doing music, was just as a DJ and then became the station manager and then came back to do an alumnus thing. So reach out to those folks and send your music because those college radio stations play stuff. That's what they want to do. It, it is a great opportunity to have those people learn something. Gateway Technical College down here has a, a radio program as well. So, shoot an email, send your stuff, ta-da. <laughs> That's carbs, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the band dad? <laughs> and why have you been tasked with that? I, I don't know. I, I, he just, I mean, I'm, I'm, he did it from the start, so now people know his name. He requested the, the sponsor. Once you take it on the <laughs> You're always it. The chain around your neck. We always feel bad. I always tell Carmen. Uh, that's feel next bad. question, please. <laughs> All right. So they'll slap each other in the car later. Those were tough questions. Oh, it made us feel so good. Go <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's a song in there somewhere. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you can send it to us. We'll play it. <laughs> Kenosha, Kentucky. What? Got the same, uh, no. no, no. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, we're, we're working on a song. I'm going to flip your gonna, chair yeah, over, yeah. Jason. <laughs> we're working on a song called Kentucky. Yeah? yeah it's, it's top it's secret. Shh. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't hear it here first. <laughs> You'll have to hear it on their page. How can people find you? On Facebook. Uh, Facebook. We have a website, www.theroyalblue.org. Www okay. As in a... Not profit, non for profit. Yeah? Not more. Are you an LLC? Have you started that? I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. No, no we're just us. We're just, yeah. yeah. We, don't, we don't plan on making much money. We don't make any money. <laughs> you make no money? Not from doing this at all, not from selling merch or people buying music? No, we have to give stuff away. <laughs> what? Well, well the, the money we do make goes right into our studio. Okay. Bond. We and do that. We have a band kitty. We, we put yeah. the money, it just goes right back into it. Yeah. That, you know, that works. So we finance our recording that way. So you're on Facebook, you have a website. Where else can people find you? Nation, Bandcamp, CD Baby. CD Baby. Amazon. Amazon, iTunes, Pandora. Spotify, SoundCloud, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leaf Hopper. I don't know what that is. I, I made it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it goes with the green tea thing. <laughs> it's going to be a thing now. It's a Leaf Hopper. Log into leafhopper.com and look up the Royal Blue. I'll be the only man there. How did you come up with the name? Don't look at it. Uh, Why are these tough questions? 
<laughs> what? Next question. Why are you uncomfortable? Do you want me to scratch your palm? Get these seats. <laughs> The one bad thing about Kenosha were the, the underground lawn chairs. I'm thinking. We did see a trolley here. We, we just came up with a name. We came the up, Royal Blue. Uh, it's, we, don't know. we could be anything. We could be a polka band. We could be a, a blues band. We could be a rock band. A it's punk ambiguous. Band. Yes, it's ambiguous. Gotcha. Just like us. Yeah? Yeah, that's what we don't have to do. <laughs> You're enigmas? Yeah. <laughs> so then, who does your imagery? Uh, my we don't have any. My, the graphic artwork? Mm -hmm. My wife does it. Do you have merchandise? We have CDs. Do you have t-shirts? I got. We have some stickers on it. We have a few more stickers. Yeah, we had t-shirts. Yeah. Kind of, anymore. kind we of purging all the stuff that we had to. We're gonna re up again and maybe come up with some new, new designs and things to, you know, keep keep going. But I think stickers, t-shirts, uh, of course, all the stuff on the web. You know. She takes care of all that, which is awesome. Oh, the image, the graphic work. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah. But we don't, we, yeah, we don't have, uh, yeah. <laughs> nah, mm -hmm. I don't we make buttons. Yeah. Buttons. I like yeah. buttons. Yeah. yeah. Buttons are fine. Yeah, we well, make buttons. I mean, the imagery, the, the, the artwork is all fine. <clears throat> it's just a matter of ordering the t-shirts and getting the stickers. Or big on collaboration. 200 bucks on t-shirts, or do we want us to put, use that $200 to studio time? You might be able you to find a band who already makes t-shirts that would cut you a really good deal to do that, or yeah. maybe not charge you at all if you agreed to like help with promotion of their product. Right. That's how that metadata thing works. Not only online, but in real life. Yeah. You, you do have to talk to people. So maybe appoint <laughs> someone, band dad, to be the people person for your group. I think on the web, kind of, so people person, you know, like behind the keyboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this is getting more awkward. Well, yeah. Do you have a YouTube? We have a YouTube yeah, channel. Have, yeah, yeah. That's right. So then, you do have a show tonight. Let's talk about oh, that yeah. and promote you guys. Yeah. So well, it's, it's kind of a private thing, so it's not a... It's not a I don't anyone. think it's open to the public. It's a birthday party for 90... 96.9 Fox radio station. You had to win tickets to get into it, so it's... That's okay. You're still helping promote them by saying it right. and yeah. yourself. We go out at 9 o'clock. <laughs> After us is Pudge from Appleton. Mm -hmm. And then the Friday Pilots Club, I think, from Chicago. Chicago. Mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. What bands do you most enjoy playing shows with so far? Oh, we've played so oh, many yeah. different... Well, Sketch Balls. Uh, we've Velasa played of out of Minneapolis. Velasa of Minneapolis. Uh, of the Kongs. Kongs. Death the Kid, which we played. Mm -hmm. That's for my brother, Rob. <laughs> Biggish on the Runway. Biggish, yeah. I've never heard of like any of them. So feel free There's to... There's just so many. Oh, we have. That's they, the problem. They know you. Like, we were, they know you. <laughs> I know! <Yeah. laughs> Maybe I'm too scary, huh? Uh, you're getting scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not scary. I'm cute, fierce, like a cat. You want to rub my belly, but you know I might bite anyway. <laughs> so after this private thing, what do you have coming up? Uh, we have some shows coming up. Um, May. May we'll be back in Oshkosh again. We get the Reptile Palace there. Barley and oh, hops. Independent Rocket Nights in Oshkosh. Oshkosh Independent Music has Thursday night shows in the summer. They did this last year. Uh, this year we got in on a show, I think it's May 5th or something, it's a Thursday night in Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. We have Electric City coming up. Oh, I don't, I don't, have you heard of Electric City Experience in Kokona? Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. like, that's like a mile of music, only it's just local acts. Mm -hmm. And we this is the fifth year or sixth year yeah. that uh, they've been doing it. It's, it's really cool and it's grown every year. It's um, nice because it's all local. Bands. It's all local bands, all original music. And now what they did last year, and they're doing it, I believe this year, is it's outdoors. Ooh. And so there's not just music, but there's food, it's there's carnival. crafts, there's carnival, carnival there's rides for the kids. So you can sit down and eat a, a veggie burger at the table and <laughs> listen to music. Awesome. You know, you know, instead of being in a bar and having to listen to music. Right. You know, it's just, it's just I don't know, I like it. Do you yeah. think we need to diversify our venues? Like, mostly music is held in a bar. Scene. Yeah. Mm. We'd like, rather be outside. Do you guys know the Weather Cafe in Green Bay? Mm -hmm. 
Never I would it. check them out. They're an all-age venue. They serve free coffee to everybody. Weather Cafe? The Weather Cafe in Green mm -hmm. Bay. Um, that's, your, that's your choice, right? I'm on it. So I know from a band that played Punk Fest last year and then came on to do an interview with us that that's where they booked, and it was all ages. They did have a cabaret license so that you could get beer if you wanted it, but they served free coffee all night to people. Mm -hmm. And, like, they make homemade, like, what was it, desserts and yeah, things? Yeah, it was desserts. It was, like, pastries and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that sounds cool to yeah. me. Yeah. We don't yeah. often go that way, yeah. um, just logistically. And because we have kids ourselves, so we seek out, you know, family-friendly, open, all-age sorts mm -hmm. of things to do on non-school nights. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we're sticklers about bedtime because we have to get up early. But, you know, that's, I like those and that's why I want, I want more all-age things yeah. and festivals. Because how do you continue to have younger people know about music if we don't offer that option? So. I know that we've reached the top of the hour. What would you like? I know, right? I'm God, so I know everything. So, um, <laughs> There's a clock somewhere right there. I don't no. see it. Do you, <laughs> you can't see it because yeah, there, there isn't the one. No, it's not the clock. Oh, okay. um, but <laughs> this, this <laughs> ah. So, in closing, what would you like to say is your final message? Where to find you, upcoming shows, words of wisdom, rules to live by. I think just, uh, you know, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Thank the fans for supporting us. You know, we do have a, a, We've got a couple of fans group there. of really that support us. Uh, Good. And, uh, it, you know, we're going to keep having fun. That's, that's really what it's about. I, mean, I still love doing it. So. Well, you're always welcome back here if we haven't made you too terribly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> we won't interview you next time. Stop <laughs> asking hard questions, Jess. But the Royal Blue from Appleton, and you can find them on multiple social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook. They have their own website. You can find all of their music on Bandcamp, Bandcamp SoundCloud, um, and what, Spotify. CGAE. So Our website, <laughs> even. Reverb Nation. Mm -hmm. Leafhopper. Leafhopper.com. Leafhopper. <laughs> it's a new thing. It's like maps. Copyright. Right? Right. Anyways, so with that, we will bid you adieu. These guys have to get to a show. And uh, stay tuned for music later on this year. New music from these guys, hopefully, right? Yep. Cool. Okay, thanks. Bye.